Washington Superintendent Chris Reichtel is lying to you. Welcome to the Jason Rand Show, brought to you by the Novak team, powered by Keller Williams. Visit them online at meetthenovaks.com. Parents from around the country are coming together to decry the toxic ideology of critical race theory, which is how curriculum is being framed by activist teachers in their classrooms. The activism, they hope, will be infectious. Teach kids the country is founded on white supremacy, and then they will be able to dismantle the systems of oppression as left-wingers deem them to be oppressive. And parents have said enough is enough. They're rising up against school boards and pushing for change. I have uh, been very alarmed about <coughs> what's going on in our school. You are now teaching, training our children to be social justice warriors and to loathe our country and our history. Uh, growing up in Mao's China, all this seemed very familiar. The uh, communist regime used the same critical theory to divide people. The only difference is they use class instead of race. During the Cultural Revolution, I witnessed students and teachers again turn against each other. We changed school names to be politically correct. Um, we were taught to denounce our heritage. The Red Guards destroyed anything that is not communist. Old uh, statues, books, and anything else. Here in Washington, our superintendent of public instruction, Chris Reichtel, and so many other bad faith partisans, he claimed in an interview last week that your anger on CRT is all the effect of a right-wing conspiracy. Critical race theory is just what everyone has now uncovered with more truth, which is it's a theory. It's mostly an academy of higher education, uh, but it's certainly got a lot of truth to it. So let's break it down. Our state has learning standards and we teach all of history. We, we, we teach it from multiple perspectives. Um, we have learning standards, whether it's in social studies or government or civics. We talk about the civil rights movement. We talk about the causes of the civil war. We talk about the experiences of black Americans, white Americans. Uh, it's comprehensive history, but it's not critical race theory. Manufactured. In fact, he said unequivocally, CRT is not being taught in our classrooms. If you believe one iota of this, ask your local school district to see their textbooks. Say, let, let me see your social studies, yes. your history, your government, your civics. I want to see the resources and, and, and judge for yourself. That's how confident I am about what we do here that is balanced. Look at the textbooks, he says. Nice rhetorical sleight of hand, superintendent. Good for you. His claims, of course, are a lie. Not an error. He didn't misspeak. He's not misspoken. He's not mistaken. He lied. And it needs to be called out because it's done in bad faith. Reichtel is playing a dishonest semantics game that he thinks he can win, but we come with receipts. CRT, let's define it. It's a wide-ranging academic concept centered around racism being a social construct, that racism was intentionally embedded in our institutions and our policies by white men, and it has been used to oppress people of color. Now, when radicals demand that we dismantle systems of oppression, they are talking about everything from American financial and healthcare systems to education and policing. Now, how do I know that? Well, I saw the CRT training at the Highline Public School District, the training that Reichtel pretends isn't happening in Washington State. So, which historical systems have been designed through this lens? You already named a bunch of them. I'm just going to pop these up real fast because we're about to go into our last breakout room. So again, education, legal, law enforcement, financial banking, housing, community design, health systems. Now that training was mandatory in the Highline School District. It was one of many sessions. The training teaches staff that race is a social construct. It states that American institutions were designed in a way to oppress people of color. It even covered the intersectionality of different identities as it relates to race. So in other words, the training was based on the teaching of CRT. Now, Reichtel and other activists, they're now trying to reframe the debate because parents are gaining momentum in stopping this toxic garbage from spreading. It's why Chris Reichtel refuses to even define CRT. Now, I asked his office for an interview, but was turned down. That's normal. He doesn't do too well when he's pushed. I asked how Reichtel defined CRT, but his office would not offer a direct response from him. But in his interview last week, he said critical race theory is not being taught. Now pay attention to how he phrases what the lesson plans are actually about. Teaching both sides of our history where we've made progress in race and where we're still dragging some of that in our institutions and our laws and our decisions, that's just good teaching. And that's what we do. And that's not exactly what is being described by folks who are, again, they contrive this for political reasons, and it's a really convenient way to throw everything they're raging about under a brand 
because it's easier to run candidates on that brand. Now, Reichdahl is technically right because he's reframing the debate. The academic discipline of CRT is not being taught in our schools. Teachers aren't explaining what CRT is, nor are they covering the legal concepts that comprise CRT. It's not a 101 or advanced level course, but no one's actually making that claim. No one's saying that. When we say CRT is being taught, the context is really simple. We mean the concept of CRT is taken as a fact and its principles frame the very curriculum that right now is getting in front of your kids. So in other words, teachers aren't teaching CRT. They're using the CRT lens to frame lesson plans. It's why we point to precise content. For example, this. Students in an eighth grade science class at Canyon Park Middle School in Bothell, they were forced to watch a video on white privilege. In it, adults were identified as privileged based on their identity. Others were deemed oppressed or marginalized, again, based on their identity. Now afterward, they were given a worksheet, these students, to describe their own identities. It either exemplified how they were either enjoying privilege or suffering from marginalization. Then the science teacher told her students this. It's really highly recommended, okay? I think it's really important to know this stuff before we can figure out ways to dismantle yeah, really like systems of oppression, okay? And I think this will also just set you up nicely for high school and just the world. And when you look at someone, remember that, you know, we all have all of these intersecting identities. So remember when Reichdahl told you to check the textbooks? Well, if you did that, you wouldn't have found that lesson because it didn't come from a textbook. It wasn't even in a history class. It was a science class. And it was based on supplemental material. You're not going to find a textbook that says CRT 101. Reichdahl's office didn't want to explain how the superintendent would describe that particular lesson plan from Canyon Park Middle School. Instead, I got a statement from a spokesperson saying, picking apart individual topics and asking if they're being taught or could be taught is probably not the best use of our time. And we can't know exactly how each specific topic is being taught within every classroom. Okay, really? That's your point? That's your comeback? Dissecting individual topics might be inconvenient for Chris Reichtel, but only in so much as the CRT lens dictating the content is actually exposed. When we have a video of the lesson, we know exactly how it's being taught. And spending my time proving Reichtel is lying to you, I think it's a good use of my time.